I'll go ahead and say it. Reno native David Wise is the best in the world at what he does. And that's the ski half pipe. Coming off a gold medal performance last week at the X Games, which saw him pull off a run the sport has never seen, he appears to be primed for an Olympic repeat in Pyeongchang. I truly do feel like I am just the banner man for a, for a giant team of people. The city of Reno, Northern Nevada, and the United States couldn't have a better representative at the Olympic Games. David Wise embodies the qualities of many people that hail from this region. A blue collar mentality, where blood, sweat, and tears mean more than status. And despite his lofty achievements, he's quick to remind you that it's not about him. I always joke about, I'm like, hey, some guy won these things and stores them here. Like, I almost have a detachment of reality with these things. Like, these were my dreams as a kid. Every single one of these gold medals here, this is a world championship gold medal, my three X Games gold medals, and obviously the, the crown and glory, the Olympic gold medal in the middle. But um, I don't feel like I can take credit for all those, you know? So it's, it's fun for me to be able to take it out and share it with people and say, like, hey, this is our gold medal. Four years ago in Russia, Wise set the world standard, winning gold in Sochi as the discipline of ski halfpipe was introduced to the Olympics for the very first time. Standing on the podium for me was one of the most epic moments of my life because um, as they were playing my national anthem, I was able to um, just think about what went into that. It wasn't just my medal. It wasn't just uh, ski, uh, the first medal for free skiing half pipe. It was my country's medal and my hometown's medal and um, everybody who believed in me along the way is medal. And, I, and so I got teary eyed standing on the podium. After a whirlwind media celebration tour, Wise returned home to Reno with a hero's welcome. It's just, yeah, it, over, it overwhelms me completely that you guys are uh, so strongly supporting me. Born and raised in the biggest little city, Wise got his start on the mountain, like many other kids in the area, at Sky Tavern the oldest and largest volunteer-run ski school in the entire United States. One of my favorite things to do is, is go back to Sky Tavern, go back to Mount Rose, go back to Alpine Meadows, the mountains that I grew up skiing, and ski with kids and just say, hey, look, I started skiing where you are skiing right now, and look how far I've come. Because I've come. Um, I feel like at some point in their lives, every kid's going to get told they can't do something. They're not good enough. They're not strong enough. They're not fast enough. And people told me that all along. But the reality is I just never believed him. I just said, that's your, that's your truth, that's not mine. I'm not gonna let that sink in. Wise said he wasn't really taken seriously being from Reno, especially from his counterparts at the lake. People would always say, oh, well, you're, you know, you're not gonna be competitive until you can ski every day like we can. And I was like, watch me. You know, I didn't let those limitations set me back. So yeah, a skier kid from Reno can make it to the top. With his steadfast determination and help from family and the community, he was able to overcome that. Every dollar we had and every um, moment of vacation my parents could spare, spare was spent skiing. And um, I had a lot of teachers spend a lot of extra time with me so that I could travel and still, you know, keep up in my schoolwork. I had a lot of coaches who, who spent extra time with me and trained, and, and trained me specifically because I was the kid who had the desire. Bobo Ski and Board was among those that helped springboard his career agreeing to sponsor what David referred to as, quote, a cocky little kid. I was tiny, I had a high-pitched voice, and I thought I was really cool. And um, I'm, I'm grateful that they were able to look past that all that bravado that I had and say, Here, here's a kid who really is passionate about what he's doing. I used to work in the back as a, you know, a waxer, and I used to, you know, screw bindings onto skis for them and stuff and in, in exchange for them supporting um, my contest entries and skis when I broke them which was pretty constantly so it's just been such a great journey. Bobo's is one of countless others that David mentions as a key to helping his career. Max McManus. Stick fall got it. <laughs> who has trained wise since he was 13 is another. Two, three, four. Yeah. Skinny sick and stand up. But as they say, behind every great man is an even greater woman. And for David, it's his wife, Alexandra. I really didn't feel like I 
ever plan on getting married young. I didn't plan on get, having kids young. None of that was part of my plan. Um, but I really feel like God put someone in my life that I couldn't ignore with my wife. Um, I, I really, and seven years later, I know this to be a fact, but I really felt this at the, at the beginning of the relationship too, as I was like, man, I'm not gonna do any better. I'm not gonna do any better than this. Like, I, I'm just lucky to be in this girl's presence. It started as a summer camp fling, but with David at Wooster High School and Alexandra at Galena, they would lose touch. But David said he could never get her out of his head. And we bumped into each other again one day and I was just like, just a moment of courage. I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let this be a question mark in, in my head anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pursue this and see what happens. And just like, it was like wildfire after that. We were married within a year and um, had a little girl not too long after that and, and the beginning of an amazing ride. What is this? It's a rat! Yeah, but like, <laughs> why is... Where did that come from? <laughs> The couple now have two children. Ah! Oh yeah, it is, it is a grandma again. <laughs> Nayeli, who is six, and Molokai, who's three. And they'll both be at the bottom of the half pipe cheering on their dad, along with a group of about 20 friends and family. They both get to be there and it means so much to me. I'm really excited for them to be able to experience it because they're old enough to really kind of understand that their dad is in the Olympics and have that awareness. Um, and just be excited for him and cheer him on. Not only did Matt believe in David, but he could see that David believed in him. More and more, that my kids understand what I do and they get excited when I do well. Even my daughter starts noticing, you know, mistakes that I make and stuff in my, in my half pipe run, which I think is really interesting because a lot of people, a lot of people, the sport is just a little too technical or a little too, uh, difficult to really see what's going on but my daughter is getting so in tune with it that she knows she knows when I mess something up she's like oh yeah I liked your second run dad but you you kind of skiffed out on that switch right dub a little bit it's pretty funny and the sacrifice that the kids in Alexandra have had to make to support his career is not lost on David the snow starts falling and dad's gone for months at a time and that's brutal on my kids um, I'm not going to say it's not the best job ever because it really is the fact that they get to go and support me is, is amazingly important to me because um, I really do feel like they've, they're, they're the ones who have paid the price for me to be at the level that I'm at. Just the day-to-day -day stuff is not wasted because we're, he's on the Olympic team and he's going to be able to go and we're going to be able to be there at the bottom and support him. Um, and it really does mean so much to me. He's our everything, he's our foundation of the family, he's our authority, he's our leader, and without him, we, we would kind of be <laughs> a house on the sand, really. But um, just to know that he's out there doing it for us, and that really inspires me to keep doing my best and to work hard for him back at home and to support him in any way that I can because he's so worthy of that. I know I can go out on the road, even though it's hard, even though it's challenging, I can go out on the road and I can give skiing my everything. I really can't give my wife enough credit. Alexandra is, is truly the best wife and mother that I've ever seen, and, and it's just an honor to be her husband. This journey for the Wises has been far from easy. On top of the family sacrifices, Wise had to overcome several injuries a three-year medal drought in the X Games, and sponsors leaving him high and dry. But despite all of that, Wise goes into the Olympics relaxed and confident, knowing that whether he comes home with a medal around his neck or not, he's already won. Having made the team is a lifetime accomplishment. Having made the team twice is a lifetime accomplishment, and so everything beyond this is a bonus. You know, I'm not setting super high expectations saying, oh, I need to win this, or I'm just going to go out and, and try to pull off the run that I've been planning for a long time. If I do, things are probably going to go pretty well. So um, that's my approach is I'm just going to enjoy the ride and try to try to ski as, as best as, I, as well as I possibly can. Such an incredible family, and it doesn't stop there. Wise is also committed to donating 10% of his earnings during competition this year to One Leg Up on Life. It's a foundation started by his sisters, Christy and Jessica Wise. Their mission, to help provide less than fortunate children with prosthetics. You can find more information about that and much more about Wise by heading to the sports page of our website at mynews4.com.
Now, WISE will begin competition Monday the 19th at 8 p.m. You can watch it live right here on NBC. We'll be wishing them luck.